Welcome to God's Word for you today. It is good to have all of you tonight. I'm so glad that uh, the Lord has given us another day, another time uh, to uh, come together at His feet. God bless you. It's good to have all of you. Shall we pray together? Father, once again, how grateful we are for this day you've given us. And this opportunity to come round your feet to learn from your word. Lord, we pray for the help of your spirit tonight to help us as we look into your words to speak to us individually. And we bless you. We thank you for all that you've been teaching us. We thank you for this night for all of our friends, our church family, those who are joining and those who will join later. And those who will be hearing me later with all of our friends around the world, we want to thank you uh, for preservation and your mercies that we have received. Bless your word to our hearts tonight, we ask in Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Once again, I welcome you all to God's word for you today, and uh, we will continue our Bible study series titled, Lessons from Divine Encounters, uh, John chapter 3, verse, verse 1. Uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Shortly I said to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Uh, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from, and where it goes so is everyone who is born of the spirit nicodemus answered and said to him how can these things be jesus answered and said to him are you the teacher of israel and do not know these things most assuredly i say to you we speak that which we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness if i have told you earthly things and you do not believe how will you believe if i tell you heavenly things let us stop there tonight and continue our our studies um, last week you will remember we stopped at at verse at verse 10 uh, again, I want to read that verse 10 in the amplified, amplified version so you can get uh, a, a total picture of Jesus' uh, uh, reply to Nicodemus. It was kind of a gentle uh, rebuke to uh, Nicodemus. This is what it says. Jesus replied, You are the great and well-known teacher of Israel, and yet you do not know or understand these things 
from scriptures. In other words, uh, all that Jesus have been talking, their deliberations and conversation up and down, that Jesus has been saying, uh, these men uh, could not understand. And so Jesus was, now remember, Jesus had said to him in verse 7, uh, do not marvel because I say to you, you must be born again. Now it seemed like here in verse 10, Jesus himself now marvels at the fact that this man was the teacher. Now, uh, I want you to know that the, the, that, that article, the, there, uh, shows and confirms that actually uh, Nicodemus was the teacher of Israel. Uh, it's, it's, it, Nicodemus was the most prominent and respected teacher of his day. So uh, Jesus is saying, really, can you really be? the teacher in Israel and not understand these things from scriptures that I have been saying. Now, Jesus marvels that a renowned teacher did not know uh, these things. My friend, uh, it's not about, you know, the letter like I explained last week. Uh, an expert in the law for that matter, Nicodemus, uh, he, was, he was not able to uh, understand uh, the things that Jesus was talking about. Uh, here is a case of a professor failing his own subject. Jesus was speaking to a man who had given himself to the study of the Old Testament and had become an expert in the law. He should have known uh, that is what Jesus is saying. Jesus also learned that same the same scripture, the same scripture that was available for them was available to Jesus and knew that Isaiah had spoken about a new life from God that Jeremiah had predicted all of these it's written in Ezekiel uh, even David David himself have written about it uh, I've talked about how God was going to graft people in so all of these were not strength they were there so that then uh, comes to say one thing then and, and the thing that he's saying is that they have the scripture. You may, you, may, you may learn something, but how about understanding? Understanding is different. Uh, all through the Old Testament uh, are statements of, about a new birth, a new beginning, a new creation, a new life. Uh, that all of this will come as a gift uh, from God. Uh, the, the, the idea that a man will be justified by by faith and not by works was seen in the life of abraham how the bible said that he believed god right there in in um, the old testament the statement was made and abraham believed god and he was counted for him as righteousness that was already there so uh, that should help them to anticipate or to understand that a day is coming when no man will be justified by the works of the law, but by, but by grace. So uh, the Apostle Paul uh, gives us uh, an insight to the, um, you know, to the reason why it's possible to may have been an expert according to uh, Israel, according to Israel, an expert in the law, and yet not know. So this, is, this was a case where the teacher of Israel now faces uh, the teacher from God, according to Nicodemus himself. Lord, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Uh, very uh, many weeks ago, I said something to you about the fact that um, if you think about what Nicodemus said about Jesus, that seven things that he knew about Jesus, one of them was that he said, uh, you know, a rabbi that you come from God. We know you come from God. Now, that is a very, very uh, important statement to make because none of those Pharisees, nobody in Israel, none of the elders could say that, that they come from God. You know, none of them could say that, you know, but it was said about Jesus 
Uh, Nicodemus said that. So, uh, again, uh, in our world today, people think just because they went to college and they had some kind of education, then they can understand uh, the Bible. And th some of the people don't even bother to read and study the Bible before they start criticizing the Bible because they think they know. Uh, I'm just saying it's, it's not easy to uh, understand the Bible with your natural uh, knowledge. Even in this instance, we see a man who dedicated himself to the study of these, you know, uh, Old Testament scriptures. And now for the first time, you know, he's hearing uh, things uh, that he had not heard before. And this was creating a lot of confusion for him. And he was having a hard time as he listened. The Apostle Paul, uh, you know, wrote to the Corinthians and he mentioned this, which might be uh, a help for us to understand why it's possible. My question is this, uh, before I read that verse to you. Do you understand what you read? Uh, same question that Philip asked that uh, eunuch on the way back to uh, Ethiopia. He was reading the scripture. He was uh, really, really interested. And he's been reading all through his journey, which was long. And Philip came up to him and asked him, do you understand? Do you understand what thou read it? And that's the same question for you, my friends, whether you're in church, whether you're uh, not in church, but do you understand? Do, do you understand? How do you understand? Uh, you will know you understand when you are practicing exactly what you have learned. That's the purpose of understanding. If God reveals something to you, then uh, you need to now do what he says. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 6, Who also made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant, uh, not of the letter, but of the spirit? For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So it's possible to uh, read and study the letter but not know this is the walk of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it takes the Holy Spirit to help us to understand what the Bible is saying. After all, the Holy Spirit himself is the author of the book. And so uh, the author can help us to understand what he is trying to say to us. Let us go on and we'll read in verse 11. Uh, I assure you, and verse 11, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Now, uh, th that is uh, 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 some kind of indictment uh, to uh, Nicodemus, this Pharisee, and the rest of the Jewish rulers and the leaders. Uh, I want you to really uh, uh, just let's take time to understand what this indictment is, what Jesus is saying. Again, Jesus used that word most assuredly, like he had used before in verse 3 when he was telling Nicodemus most assuredly. I'm saying this, you know, for a fact, verily, verily, or truly, truly, with all certainty, I say to you, unless one is born again. Now, uh, you know, he used that same word in verse 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, again, in verse um, 11, he used that word again. He's trying to tell this man, see, everything you're hearing, even though you're confused and you do not understand it, but everything you're hearing from me now is, is truth. It, this is certainty. I know that you spent so much time in school and you 
pride yourself you know as an expert you are prominent you are highly respected and you you know all this you know you should know all these things you know and you're surprised that you don't know them but i'm telling you the truth remember last week uh, we made a statement that you know when an unintelligent man you know is puzzled about a subject it's due to his inability to understand the subject at hand. You know, he, he's puzzled because he just doesn't understand. But when an intelligent man is puzzled, it's, it is puzzled because he is surprised that he doesn't understand having exhausted his reasoning capability. Now, listen very carefully. Jesus used this, said, we speak. Uh, wh what does he mean? Why does he speak here in Pura? Um, you know, uh, let's listen to his word. Uh, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness or our testimony. Uh, first of all, let's, let's try to understand. We speak. Who are the we speaking? And then he said, we do know. Now, he speaks here in Pura, meaning himself and the others who have preached the same gospel uh, that he is now presenting to Nicodemus. You know, not only has Jesus, you know, been foremost in preaching this gospel, John the Baptist also have preached this same gospel. His disciples have preached this same gospel same gospel you know so so when jesus said we speak when we speak he in, and he speak here in Pura, he's meaning himself and the others who have preached but not only did we speak he said and we do know this is very very interesting uh, that jesus is saying we're not just speaking what we do not know we're not one who's saying something that is over our head that we do not have an understanding for. Look, um, in, in Matthew 23 and in verse 2 and 3, Jesus said these about the scribes and the Pharisees. Uh, listen, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you, to observe that observe and do but do not do according to their walks for they say and do not do so uh, Jesus you know differentiated uh, the 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 teachings of the Pharisees from their lifestyle or their practical application now, Jesus said, whatever they tell you to do, do it because they are quoting from uh, the scriptures. They're, they're quoting it from the law. And so that is not wrong what they're telling you to do. But don't do what they do because they, they say, they, they say, but they do not do. And, and when you do not do, that means you do not really understand what you say. Jesus said, unlike them, we speak that that we know. Well, how, how do we prove that we know it? We prove it by practical application. Jesus, you know, it was very obvious, very, very apparent to the people uh, that Jesus was equal with his words. Whatever he preached, that's how he lived. The people also, as much as the Pharisees condemned the sinners, the hallows, the, you know, the people themselves understood that the Pharisees were hypocrites. Uh, they know them. Some of them know them. You know. So uh, let's let's get back to these verse eleven, and then we are trying to understand what Jesus was uh, saying uh, to Nicodemus. So we speak. That which we know, so we, un, we, we, we explain that. But the other part of that verse, uh, Jesus said, Now, not only do we speak 
what we know. And then he said, we and testify what we have seen. So, um, and testify what we have seen. So, we give evidence of the truth of the gospel through uh, the, the miracles uh, that are performed. Proof is given that this gospel came from heaven. Uh, we've seen, uh, we testify that the gospel set the captives free, restored the brokenhearted, and healed the sick and, and, and the infirm, and brought changes in the hearts and lives of men. The gospel that we preach uh, is bringing results. Now, my friends, uh, this is important because uh, I, you know, this is an indictment to those who claim to be religious leaders. Now, uh, I do not know, it's not on record anywhere, that any of these Pharisees have done any miracle. Nicodemus have not performed any miracle. He, yeah, he was a great teacher, prominent. He, they, hope, they, they claim to be uh, preaching from God's word. But then the, the gospel that they are preaching is without any kind of testimony or proof. So Jesus is saying, not only do we speak what we know, you know, what we know, what, what we know is what we're preaching. We know this God. We, we know his son that is sent among us. And, and that's why we preach. And then we testify what we have seen. We have, we have seen, we have seen that this is, uh, the, the, the Messiah that was promised to us. This is the son of God. So, uh, there is a reason why Jesus is saying this, uh, to this man. Uh, like I said, it's an indictment to the, to, to the religious uh, leaders and it's a wake up call for Nicodemus. And it may be just uh, the same thing for somebody out there tonight. Are you stuck up somewhere in a religion of no power, a religion of no proof, a religion of, you know, no testimony? Uh, so uh, Jesus, Jesus said, and we and testify uh, what we have seen. We speak, we know, we testify what we have seen. In other words, uh, we have seen life change. We have seen miracles. And then the last part of the statement, it says, um, and you do not receive our witness or a testimony. You see why this uh, was an indictment to uh, Nicodemus and his, uh, his peers and, and fellow Pharisees. My friend, what does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, Jesus said, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And with all of these, you do not receive our witness. Now, I want you to know this, that it was a serious offense among the Jews to question or to depart from the authority of their teachers. Uh, Nicodemus uh, knew this. They were they himself is a, a rabbi. Uh, he he knows that pe people usually uh, stick to the teachings of their teachers and do not depart from it. Nicodemus, Nicodemus himself have confessed and ascertained that our Lord Himself is a teacher that come from God. And yet, now, Nicodemus and his fellow Pharisees and the Jewish elders refused Jesus' testimony about himself and the kingdom of, of God. Uh, now, the reason why Nicodemus is here is because Nicodemus is changing sides and he's thinking in his head, he's battling with uh, religion and the truth. Truth means he's now presented with evidence of who Jesus really is. You know, he, 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 he is the, the, the veil is being removed from his eyes and the veil of religion is being, 
you know, cast off. And the man is being able to see clearly. I mean, there is a big difference when the veil was there covering the holies of holies. People can only imagine God. People can only imagine what was going on there. People can only imagine their relationship. People can only imagine what this God think about them. But on, on that day, fateful day, when Jesus was on that cross, the veil was torn from top to bottom. And the way to the holies was open. And people, men, not just priests alone once in a year, can come in to the holies of holies. Now everyone can see the way through because Jesus made a way for us. And now we can come into the holies of holies where we may see God face to face and don't have to imagine God anymore. But we can know him now and uh, we don't have to, you know, presume anything. We can, we can see the way clearly into the holies of holies. Now, Jesus said, we spoke. You, 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 we spoke what we know. Uh, our gospel was authentic. And you know that. In fact, you know, one time the Pharisees said among themselves, what are we going to do with this man? The whole world is gone after him. You know, uh, what are we going to do about the testimonies of these people who have been, uh, who, who have been beneficiaries of his, uh, uh, you know, mercy and miracles? I, I mean, some of these people we know who were crippled, who were blind all around town, and their stories have changed now for good. I mean, we can argue with his doctrine, we can argue with his style, we can argue with what he is, you know, how he, how he does things, but we cannot argue against this proof. Only fools argue against proofs. You know, there is proof all around us. So, uh, so Jesus is saying, we spoke. Our message, our gospel uh, was authentic. I'm not the only one who has spoken. Others have spoken, you know. Uh, John the Baptist has spoken. There are others who have spoken. My disciples have also have witnessed and spoken this thing. But, and then we have proof. We, we have testified. You've seen, you know, the proof of all of these. The, 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 the captives are set free. Uh, the broken hearts are restored. The healed and the infirm are healed. And yet you do not receive our testimony. Now, uh, this is exactly, uh, you know, what this verse is saying, and it's an indictment. My friends, there was no excuse to have rejected the testimony uh, of Jesus if the religious leader or the rest of the Pharisees had applied the law of witness from their own scripture. You know, there is a way... Uh, you find out what the truth is. The, you know, there is the law of witness, which is the law to ascertain truth in judgment. Let me read to you in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. I read the New Living Translation. You know, this was the law um, for Israel in ascertaining truth in judgment. I say you must not convict any one of a crime on the testimony of only one witness. The fact of the case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So you hear that? The fact of the case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. This is a very important law uh, in Israel because this law protects a man from being judged based only on a single witness. It is a good principle to judge what the truth is. Later on, uh, Jesus will teach uh, in Matthew 18 verse 16, uh, it says, but if he does not listen, Jesus was talking about having when there is uh, some misunderstanding 
uh, between you and your brother and you have tried to talk to him and he's not listening. Then he said, but if he does not listen, take along with you one or two others so that every word may be confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Um, you know, so uh, there, is, there is a law to, to judge uh, what the truth is by testimonies. Not just one testimony, but by other testimonies. Uh, later on, the apostle would write Second Corinthians 13, and in verse 1, uh, the apostle said, This will be my third time uh, I'm coming to you. Then he said, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. So th there is a law of ascertaining what the truth is, how you can judge. So if the Pharisee and the religious leader had a problem about Jesus, then they, they could use this law to find out and judge whether this man is right or not. Uh, well, obviously, as you will guess and know, they did not do that. So, um, and then when you, when you add the testimony of Nicodemus about Jesus, when he said, we know thou art a teacher come from God. No one can do these signs except God is with him. You know, then that means actually, they did know. They did know that Jesus was authentic. They did know that, you know, at least some of them know. So then what is the problem? The last thing Nicodemus said, and then we know that God is with you. Now, if God is with him, why are you against him? That is the problem with, with, with the people. You know, uh, like the ostrich will bury his head and put his head in the sand. Well, I don't know why he's doing that. There are so many people, they say, well, you know, they don't want to see the sun. So they close their eyes. Well, you know, that doesn't make the sun to go away. The truth is there. And, and we live in, in a time like that now. When men and women are suppressing the truth for their own righteousness. You know, they, anything that, that will... Uh, disturb their own way of life, their, you know, propositions and their desires, feelings, emotions, anything. It, it's got to be, it's got to be wrong and out of the way. Now, you know, um, there are just some things that cannot be changed. We cannot substitute morality because the, the same you who do not want, you know, these laws, you know, you don't want anybody to you know, violate you, steal from you. We still need those laws. We still need those laws in place. Men cannot live uh, without those laws. It is those laws that protect you and protect me. There is the truth. The, tr the truth is not this and that. The truth is just one thing. And, you know, it, you know this is what happened here, that these people... Jesus said, you do not receive our witness and our testimony. What, what testimony did, did they reject? What the, they rejected the testimonies of the scriptures. Uh, all through the Old Testament, as we have been studying and reading, uh, the Old Testament had been all, all along intimating uh, about Jesus and when Jesus came they could see his fulfillment you know he was born in Bethlehem he was born of a virgin you know uh, he was doing a, the, the scripture were already written Jesus himself said uh, to them uh, the, you know in, in verse four, John chapter 5 and verse 39 he said you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me. Now listen, uh, you search the scripture. In the scripture, uh, in them you, you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. They point out 
to me. It doesn't matter where you read, whether you, 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 you read Genesis, it's pointing out to me. Where you read Exodus, it points out to me. Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, you know, it points out to me. The Psalms point out to me. Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, it doesn't matter where you turn. Jesus on every page of scripture. So when Jesus charged Nicodemus and said, we, sp we spoke what we know. We are not genuflecting. We, we are not just one who, who, you know, just saying things are out of the air. No, what we are saying is what we know. And not only that, we testify what we have seen. We give evidence of the truth of the gospel and uh, confirm by the accompanying signs. But you do not receive our, our witness or you did not receive our testimony. So, my friend, what testimonies did they, did they reject? Jesus was saying, you rejected the testimonies of scriptures. Because if you, if, you, if you look at the scripture, Jesus said, oh, they testify of me. They rejected also the testimony of John the Baptist. Remember, I mean, John the Baptist came, just showed up, you know, because before then they had not had any kind of word from God, no, no open vision, nothing f from God. And John showed up and John started preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he started baptizing uh, them. And, and one day, as we read in John chapter 1, and in verse 29 through uh, 37, listen, uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, um, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, yet you do not receive our witness, our testimony. They rejected the testimony of Scripture because... Uh, again, now all of a sudden Nicodemus is, is, as, is marveling because Jesus said to him he needed to be born again. What happened? He, he, he had not, you know, read all of that in scripture. They were all there. Now, they, they have rejected the testimony of John the Baptist. Let's read in John chapter 1, 29 to 37. Uh, it says the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. And he said, uh, now you can picture that John was at, in jo at Jordan baptizing. A lot of people were there. By the way, the uh, first few disciples of Jesus were with John and they were there. So as people were coming, uh, the scripture also say, John saw Jesus coming towards him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, John does not say that to everybody. John had been baptizing now, you know, you know, for some time, and people have been coming and going. But this very day, when Jesus came to that uh, water of baptism, and John saw Jesus coming, Everyone that was there that day, including the Pharisees that have come to watch him, because the scripture tells us they go to watch him and to, you know, criticize. They come to every service. They think their ministry is the ministry of criticism. So they show up in every service. So everyone heard the testimony of John the Baptist concerning Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You know, for, for the biblical illiterate, you know, it may not have meant something much, but those who are studious, who, who knew that this was, that statement was an answer to a question much long time ago when Isaac asked Abraham, Hey, Father, I see the I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the lamb for the offering? And Abraham said, uh, "The Lord will provide Himself a lamb. The Lord will provide a lamb." 
And so when, when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, actually he was answering the question that Isaac asked a long time ago. So everybody that was there had that testimony uh, about Jesus. This is he of whom I said, John is speaking, after me comes a man who's preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, he's testifying uh, of the pre-existence of Jesus Christ. He's saying that he's not just showing up now. This man is ancient of days. He was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. In fact, he said, he's the reason why I have this ministry. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel like I'm doing today. That's the reason why I am here baptizing with water. So you can see John explaining this. And John bore witness, testimony, saying, uh, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. Are you listening? This is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Now, uh, you know, let's take a pin right there. Let me read the last statement to your hearing. Uh, so now you will understand what Jesus was saying to, uh, to Nicodemus and the religious leader. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. John pointed him out. So when Jesus said to Nicodemus, we speak what we know, we testify what we have seen, yet you do not receive our witness or testimony. If these two disciples could receive the testimonies of John, if they could follow him and accept him and follow, you know, the, the, the Messiah, there is no excuse for the rest of uh, the people, especially those who pride themselves in waiting on this kingdom of God, waiting on this Messiah. So you understand, when, when Jesus said, you do not receive our testimony, meaning they did not receive the testimony of scriptures. Why? Even John himself was saying, I was quoting uh, the scriptures to be able to reveal Jesus. Now uh, we, we see uh, that they, they refused that, that testimony of the scripture. They refused the testimony of John the Baptist. Now Jesus is preaching everywhere with his disciples. And now the testimony of his disciples themselves. You know, at this moment, Andrew, remember um, Andrew, one of the two who heard John speak, followed him, was also Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. So that is the testimony of Andrew. Andrew has a testimony and witness uh, that this man, Jesus, uh, is the Messiah. So uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you have not received a testimony. You, you have not received a testimony of anyone. You people have not received the testimony of anyone. Then later on we find Nathaniel. Uh, in, in John chapter 1 verse uh, 49, Nathaniel answered. Remember Nathaniel? Nathaniel was the guy 
who when they said to him, Oh, we have found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Nathanael was the guy who said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Remember? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And later on, when he encountered Jesus, saw Jesus face to face, and Jesus uh, said to him, I saw you before Philip called you while you were sitting under the fig tree. Nathaniel exclaimed and said this powerful, powerful word, this powerful confession. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel, you know. So, you know, we can go on and on about the testimony. Uh, so, if you remember where we started, I said there was no excuse to have rejected the testimony uh, if they had applied that law of witness from the mouth of two or three, uh, from, the, from, from the, the scripture itself. That is one testimony. John the Baptist, that's another testimony. They have two already that could verify. And if from Jesus himself, all the things that he, he said and done. And then there are the disciples there. The prophets of old have recorded Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. You know, all of them have written and they had testimony. So there was no excuse for them to have rejected this testimony. This was a great indictment, my friend, uh, my friends, concerning the Pharisees. Jesus said, uh, most assuredly, I say to you, uh, verse 11, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our testimony. Now, that is the problem of our world. It's still the problem of our world. Many have seen, you know, it's, it's not, not lack of proof anymore. It's not lack of evidence. In fact, what Jesus is saying here is that the problem was not lack of evidence, but refusal to believe the evidence. Now, understanding is one thing. Believing is another. As we have seen in, the, in this case, Jesus charged this Pharisee and the other rulers of unbelief. He said, you did not believe. He did, he, you did not believe. I mean, you have the evidence all around you. And I, so now, again, like I said, the prophets also gave evidence. It's in their scriptures. God, the Father, gave evidence. Uh, if you, let's go back to that, that water of baptism while Jesus was there. While Jesus was being baptized, the Bible says the heaven opened and a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That is the testimony of, of, of God, the father. What, what else do they need? What else do they need? Not only that, the Holy Spirit uh, is, gave his own evidence. That same day, John said, I testified the Holy Spirit came upon him while he was there. Now, that was a very, very strategic time in the history of, of our age. It, it was the only time when the three in one was present in the same place. God the Son was Coming out of that water, God the Father uh, spoke from heaven. And God, the Holy Spirit, came down upon him. The Trinity was present right there at Jordan's uh, uh, River, at Jesus' baptism. So, my friend, uh, there are so many around us today that are in unbelief. You know, uh, people who are honest, people who really are sick in a honest a honest and seeking heart will always find the truth. That's eventually what happened in the case of Nicodemus. Now, you know, even though he was baffled and marveled, and, uh, but eventually he gave up his religious uh, tradition. He gave up his religion and 
you know, embraced the truth. He embraced the testimony. Because, see, uh, there is the truth. I mean, we may live in a world that is trying to suppress the truth. But the truth is truth. You, you know, the sun will not go away. You may dislike the sun and don't want to see it and close your eyes, but the sun will still be there. And so it is with the truth. The truth will be. And, and, and you see the problems and the repercussions, the consequences of uh, suppressing the truth. You see all around us. S see, I hope that we change uh, on time before it's, it gets too late. Again, uh, understanding is one thing, believing is another. And that is what, what, what uh, justify what the truth is. Uh, you know, don't tell me you understand. Bec when I cannot see, you know, the practicality of the things you underst understood. And that is what we're, you know, what, what Christianity is. Christianity is not just understanding, but Christianity is doing what we know. Praise the Lord. So, uh, this, this is what this means in verse 11. And it's very sad that Jesus had to really bring this out and, and charge the, 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 the rest of Israel, the, the rulers, if eventually these people who put him to his death. They said, you know, you've rejected the testimony. You know, there was no need for you to have it. If all you're wanting is to prove and ascertain the truth, Okay, how about the men? How about the men that you you knew were infirm, like the man born blind? He was he was stationed at the temple all his life. He never see, and you guys walk past him every day into that temple. You knew him, and now he can see. Now, you and the day that that miracle happened, guess what? The Pharisees busy themselves with. They saw the miracle live. It was not reported to them. They saw it live. They saw it unfolded. They saw the man. He spoke with them. They called his parents and even tried to argue. And all that they busy themselves with was that Jesus did this on a Sabbath day. You see, that is the problem of unbelief. They completely ignore the magnificence of the miracle that just happened. They completely ignore the, the display of God's mercy upon someone. And all they busy themselves with is this happened on a wrong day. Uh, you know, you know, this miracle should not have happened on a Sabbath day. What is a good day to have a miracle other than a Sabbath day, other than the Lord's day? Uh, that is where hypocrisy is at its highest, you know. And, and so they refused and rejected the testimony, and this statement was an indictment to them. Let's go on to verse 12, and verse 12 Jesus now say, okay, look, you, you, you do not receive this testament, but in verse 12, he said, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? You know, I, ha I have just told you uh, earthly things. I have used earthly il illustration. You know, I have spoken to you in plain style, my friend, uh, using the simplest il illustration and similitudes, and you do not understand. What, what would you do if I speak to you of heavenly things? I have spoken to you that unless a man is born, born again, try to help you to understand that there is, there is the natural birth, and there is the spiritual bird. I have tried to explain these things in just simple uh, style. In its, I use simplest illustration and you do not understand. V verse 13, Jesus continues and says, uh, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven 
that he is the son of man who is in heaven. And Jesus is saying to him that, you know, I, I came from heaven. So I have the authority uh, to be able to tell you things from heaven. So, my friend, uh, are you battling uh, with certain unbelief tonight? You know, even maybe it's a private thing in your own life and it's just uh, an unbelief. Maybe you are at a junction, now you're trusting God for something and uh, uh, unbelief is creeping in. Uh, God has given you many proofs and evidence before. He's shown his mercy. He's proven to you that he is a great God. But you just can't believe him for these. My friend, let me encourage you tonight. After all he has done for you. After all he has done for you. Look at where he brought you from. How far he brought you from. You could trust him now. You can still trust him now. Just give him your hand and let him uh, take you across and take you through. Remember, God will never bring his children to a place where the only way out is retreat. Remember the children of Israel at the Red Sea. There was no way out. There was no way. And God did not tell them to go back. God said, go forward. Why? Because God brought them there. God brought them there. If there is a heavy load you're carrying tonight and you feel the weight of the world is upon you and you can actually feel the weight upon you, Jesus said, you know, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. My friends, uh, what, what a lesson. I know many times we have read this story and we have, you know, rushed through them. But, you know, in the last five, six weeks, we have been taking our time and learning about this conversation. Uh, you know, we will continue and probably will get to that famous verse uh, in the next lesson. We will read verse 14, 15, and then we'll come to John 3, 16 what it meant that day for Nicodemus to hear that for the first time, what a revelation to him, and what it means to us today. May the Lord continue his blessing. I trust that you have uh, been blessed tonight. I want you to think about those things that we have talked about, you know, uh, as Jesus charged this man and the religious leaders, uh, his charge is also, uh, you know, for us. He charged them with unbelief. So uh, not, not in this verse did he charge them for not understanding. You know, before he had asked, uh, he said to Nicodemus, you didn't understand. But now he just said, you just don't believe. And that is the problem. You see, unbelief is not an unbeliever's problem. Unbelief is a believer's problem. So uh, check in your heart, check in your life. And see if there's an area of unbelief tonight, uh, why don't you just rest that and trust God for the journey. God bless you. Let us pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity tonight to uh, sit at your feet and open your word. Thank you for all that you have spoken to us tonight. And thank you for your Holy Spirit that's uh, working on our heart. Father, sometimes or many times, Lord, we exercise unbelief. In spite of all the evidence and all your goodness, everything that you've done for us, sometimes we just uh, fail to trust you. Lord, we repent. We ask for your forgiveness tonight. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will enable us. Lord, that we will be able to accept the testimony that comes from heaven. Accept the testimony of our own lives and what we have seen, what we have witnessed. Lord, we do bless you. Lord, I'm praying for someone out there tonight who needs a breakthrough, who needs a miracle. Someone who completely have lost hope tonight. I just pray that you will send your word tonight 
meet them at a point of their need and turn this prayer to a testimony for them in the matchless name of Jesus. I pray for all of our friends who have tuned in, everyone that is tuned in to this anointing tonight. I pray that that anointing will work for them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you will bless the rest of the week for them in Jesus' name. We do thank you. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. My friend, if you are out there and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, my friend, I invite you tonight. Why don't you ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life tonight? Ask him. Oh, Lord Jesus, I come in the name of Jesus. Just say this prayer with me. I am sorry for my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Tonight, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And he's alive. He's here with me now answering my prayers. Lord Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life tonight. Please write my name in the book of life. I commit my future into your hands. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, my friends, until next time, uh, God bless you and keep you. Thank you all for joining. May the Lord bless you tonight. And to all of our friends around the world, happy morning. May the Lord bless the rest of your week. Until next time, Press on, pray up, stay well, and look up. God bless you. Bye-bye now.